Hey everyone, um, we're going to be looking at the next steps on building your section from your section cut um, in Rhino here. So where you left off last time, you have your section cut in your topography and then you also have brought it over to the side and rotated it so that it is the right way up. Um, okay, so if you have not done so already, I want you to grab all of your terrain objects, so your 3D um, terrain, and then just create a new layer, um, which you can do by clicking on this little new layer button in the top left, and just create a top of layer if it's not already there, um, and put your objects in there. And then I've got mine turned off here, and you won't be needing it for now, so you can just... Um, hide it here by clicking on the little light bulb so that it is gone. And then the next thing we want to do is move our contour lines to a new layer. Um, so just for clarity I am going to turn my background image off. And we've got all of our topo lines here. Um, so underneath the line work we're gonna make a new sub layer and we're gonna call that contours. And then you can move all of your contour lines into this layer. You can either right click on the layer um, and then change object layer, or I prefer doing it this way. You can go into this properties panel at the top and then underneath layer, you'll get a drop down menu and you can change things in there too. So just two different ways of doing it. So then once we've done that, we actually want to change some of the properties of this contour line layer. So we want to change the color, make it a little bit of a lighter gray. Maybe we'll go a little bit lighter than the background here just so we can still see them. And then you have a few different options here which you can get into when you're playing with um, 3D This Is Materials. And then here's your line type. So we're going to choose our line type to be dashed. And then if you zoom in, you can see that they're now showing up as dashed, which is great. And then the other thing that we are going to do is um, set the line type scale. So set line type scale is the command. And then it automatically suggests 1000. Um, and we're just going to hit enter. OK. So now that we've got our contours set up where we want them, I'm going to turn the image back on and we are going to drag a selection window over all of these and copy them over so we have a new working space without interfering with our old work. So to do that, um, if you don't have it on, turn the gumball on by clicking on the little gumball option in the bottom here. And then a really easy way to copy stuff over is just to hold the Alt button while you drag one of the directional arrows, and that creates a copy. Just move it a little farther over. Okay, now we're going to rotate all of this, um, the site information that you have to match with the rotation of the section. So, how I would do that is to just use the polyline tool, click really anywhere and hold shift to make sure that you're making an orthographic line. So now you know that that's completely horizontal, press enter. And then grab all of these objects and you want to make sure that you can see your um, your section cut and we're going to rotate it based on that section cut so type in the command rotate and then you want center of rotation so if you imagine um, um, you're rotating around an axis so you're just picking that first axis so I'm going to choose the end of my section cut and then your first reference point is going to be the other end of that cut so go to there and then the second reference point, again, you're just going to bring it up and you're going to hold shift and it'll automatically pop to a 90 degree angle. 
and then I'm just going to move that down so it's out of the way. So now you can see our section line is exactly horizontal um, to match with the horizon line. So now for clarity, I'm going to turn off the background image and our contour lines. And we just need to um, align these. I can get rid of this. And we are going to type move. We want to move from this end point. And then we can turn smart track on and we're just going to align it. You can see it's giving me like a little guideline there. So we're just going to align the two ends so we know that they're exactly in line with each other. Okay, now we want to make um, a reference line on the plan that shows where our section cut is without including the elevation detail. So right now I'm in top view, but if I go um, into like front view, we can see that this, or maybe right is better, we can see that this has elevational information to it, it's not completely flat. Um, so we just want to make basically a projected line. Um, so the way that I'm going to do that, there's two different ways. Um, as like most things in Rhino, there's like two or three different ways to do everything. Um, so I am going to give myself another sublayer under sections just so I can kind of keep track of where things are going. And I'll just type like section reference. And I'll create a polyline right on top of this section cut. Oops. And now I'll grab that section cut. And we want to use the command set point set PT and then we're gonna um, set the the Z point so the X and Y are the two that move it kind of up and down in this plane and then the, the Z axis um, is what's going to project it to be flat and we're gonna say align to world which is just the zero plane or kind of like the floor hit OK so now you can see when I go back into here, it just looks like a point because it's completely flat. Or if we look here, it's just flat here. Now we can select the um, original section cut and we can hide it. Now we've got our section cut. And then we've got our original image with our section reference running through it. So we need a way of transferring the information that we have in plan view up into our section. So we're going to go into our line work layer. We're going to make a new sub layer and then a few new layers underneath that. Um, probably do like five or six depending on what your site looks like. And then you're just going to choose materials for each of these. So just look at your site and decide kind of which materials you're going to have to be projecting up to your section cut and make layers accordingly. Additionally, it's probably best that you choose different colors for each of these. Um, just so that you can be distinguishing them as you're building. So I'm going to start with roads. And I'm actually going to move this up a little bit. So now what we want to do is find all of the places where roads cross our section line. And we want to project them up so that they touch or cross our section. So 
So I'm going to start by doing that just with the polyline tool and I'm going to do it quickly here. Um, I'll show you a couple and then I'll just kind of uh, speed the video up so it doesn't take too much time. But I start with drawing pretty short lines just to give myself um, a guideline but then I don't have to be zooming in and out all the time. Another quick way of doing this is again to do that copy move tool. So I've got the gumball on and then I'm going to hold alt while I move this over and just drop it wherever I think it needs to go. Okay, let's say for the sake of argument that you have finished um, adding all of these projected lines upward from all of the notable features on your site. So you're going to turn the image off and then you're going to grab all of your previously completed line work, which might have helped you um, in locating some of these lines. You can hide those. If they're on their own separate layer, you can also just um, make the, uh, the layer disappear with this kind of light bulb. And then we're going to project all of these lines upward to either touch or cross um, the section line. So I'm actually going to cross them, um, only because that can be useful for when you're drawing buildings and things. So I'm just going to draw um, in the, maybe I'll do it in this section reference. I'll draw one more horizontal line across. So you can grab one of these lines and type the command extend. Select curve to extend and you just want to select that curve again by clicking on it and we're going to make it cross the section line and touch this top line here. You can notice that it says select curve to extend, press enter when done. So it's actually going to just keep automatically um, using this uh, extend command and you can go through and extend all of your different curves. Okay, I'm gonna pretend like this is a cooking show and we've just taken our fully cooked turkey out of the oven in five minutes. Um, this is just the one that Stephanie had put together and it has all of the layers and all of the lines projected. So now you can see how you can have quite like a fully fleshed um, section just by projecting all of these lines you know exactly where you need to be building everything. So once you've got all those lines as guidelines the next thing that I like to do is put some heights on here just so that I know um, what I'm working with in terms of elevation. So first we're going to create a new sub layer and I'm going to call it elevation. And under that sublayer, we are going to decide how far we want our elevational details to be spaced. So in this case, um, I know that this topography is quite uh, extreme. So I'm going to say we want our um, lines to be 25 meters apart. So that's just my guideline. To make the lines, we're going to start at sea level, draw one line, and we're going to use the linear array tool. So the command is array linear. Um, and maybe I want like 10 of these, 250 meters elevation change, which is pretty big, but uh, the first reference point we're going to use the end here. And then the second reference point, we're going to use this guideline and just snap to the end. So now we're going to, we know that it's going straight up and that it's um, exactly 25 meters. And I can get rid of this guideline. So now we have a grid to be building off of. So say that maybe two of these lines are like um, a skyscraper or something. 
uh, you know exactly how wide your building needs to be and then based on the um, estimated height you know how tall you need to be building it in this section. So now you can see how you can start populating your section um, with the buildings, infrastructure, surfaces. Um, you can start building down into the ground in terms of what's being um, built upon. And a lot of this will be using your site visits, your personal photography, and Google Street View to construct an accurate section of the site. For now, you can start drawing everything that exists on site using um, these layers that you've set up and then the polyline tool for straight lines and the uh, interpolate point curves for more organic shapes. See you next time.